Welcome again uh, to this other video from our exploitation uh, course. So if you remember in the last time what we did is we took advantage of uh, this basic program. Let's open it and just look at what the program is just as, as a reminder. And yeah, so we have this and let me get the program also to see what it is. Okay, so as you can see, we have this basic program. It takes an argument, like a string as an argument. It passes it to my function one. My function one does some copy, and then that the value that gets copied or the location of it, it gets passed to uh, this, this function. Then this function will print uh, what, what's inside, what you have copied. So you'll just, it will just, print what we entered. So if we go run the program, let's do that quickly. Okay. Hello. Well, that's not a hello. This is a hello. Okay. So if we run the program, uh, whatever you input, it will print it out. But if you remember, if we input something like this, then I, I even know, uh, typed it by mistake this other character but anyway what happened is everything behind after the uh, the space this character was cut off why because this is a null byte it's going to be considered in a string a null byte so that's way that way if you remember if we need to do this if we need to pass both of these values i need to put them between uh, double quotes so it means that a null byte will cause some problem that's one two uh, in in the case here, uh, some of you asked from where did I get this shell? If you remember, if, if we run the program, uh, what will happen? It will uh, like run uh, a calculator. It will exploit the application and run a calculator. In this case, by the way, it didn't run because I need to find the uh, I need to find the jump instruction. So I just need to change that. But if I change it, actually, let's do that quickly. Let's just do that quickly. Uh, just so we get a better uh, understanding and a reminder of all of this. Let's just get another jump PSP instruction quickly. It's not going to take a lot. And let's do, uh, let's do the other one, actually. Yeah, not this one. Wait. Even though we could do it this way. Yeah, let's just do this. Yeah, yeah just this. Any one of them. We just need the jump instruction. So... We go to executables, we go to ntdll. That's where I think I got it the first time, right? Yep, ntdll. And now if we just search for the instruction, so if we search for command and jump PSP, we should find this one. So let's take this instruction and go back here. See what do we have? We have 77BC10. Three, four. So let's ch change this. So this is three, four, same. One, ten, the same. Then we have B, uh, B, C, then 77. Okay, so this is enough. We, we don't need this anymore. So let's stop that. And now if we run this code, it should uh, run our calculator. Great. So the calculator is used here as a proof of concept. Uh, for our POC to prove that, yeah, this application is vulnerable and etc. Now, how did I get this code? This is what this whole video is all about, actually. So if we go to our Kali machine, uh, I downloaded this WinExecCalc shellcode. This is what I will usually use for uh, demonstration purposes, okay? And now what we will be doing is let's download the code. So let's download this. And see how we can get this to work okay okay so this is done let's go to our uh, let's go to our where is this let's download see what we have here so we have this 
Okay, let's put it on our desktop. Or maybe just some other place. Yeah, let's put it over here. Extract. Okay. So this is where our code is. Let's go there. And let's see what do we have here. So if we do the cat the readme, let's see what do we have. Uh, let's read it actually on the website, maybe on the GitHub, it's better. So readme is telling you that this is a small no free shell code that executes a calc, runs on x86 and x64, Windows 2000 XP and 8.1, all service pack, but it doesn't mention it runs on Windows 10. And that's what we are going to make it run on Windows 10. It's no free, but let's see uh, how that's going to work. We we will, we are going to overcome any problems that we have in it. So uh, we'll make it work on Windows uh, 10, and we'll also make sure it's also no free at least for our application. So that's basically what this is. It's a basic shell code, uh, which is usually used for proof of concept. Uh, it has multiple, uh, some run a calculator, uh, other run like a DLL, uh, some sh calculator as a shell code. So it's up to you what do you want to, which one of these you want to use. So let's go and see how to build this. The build is really straightforward and very easy. And as you can see here, if you are using NASM, this is how you do that. If you are using YASM, this is how you do that. And you can use any of one of these for stack alignment and building the shell code, etc. You can read all of that. For this video, I'm just going to go with the basic one, this. So let's go here and go back. Okay. So just let me double check. Wait, here, what do we have? Yeah. So we are going to build this. Win32 exit calc shellcode.asm. The output will be this Win32 exit calc shellcode.bin. So if we run that, that's it. Now we have you do file to this. We'll see that it's telling you it's some bin data. If we do xtd to the file, we can see that these are the bytes we have inside of it. Okay, we can see that these are the bytes that we have uh, inside of this. And if we even output, let's see if we can output the content. It should be binary, so it's not readable. Yeah, but we can see here that we have the one of our problems. So one of our problems, it is null free, right? It's null free. This shell code is definitely null free. But the problem is the character 20 or the, the byte 20 in hex represents the space. The hex, this one represents the space. So if we go back and let's say we go to ASCII to hex. Actually, I didn't even type ASCII. So I typed a mistake, typo. So let's see what's going to happen here. Where is this? There's a page, the one, one tool I really like to use. Uh, and it's called actually ask it to hex. Why didn't I type it? Uh, correct. Ask key to hex. Yep. Where is the tool? Where is it? I like this one. You might say just go with any one of them. <laughs> I am still. Yeah, let's just go with any one of them then. Okay. So this table, see what it is. Okay, I don't need this actually then. Uh, I'm just going to go with the command line. Let me show it to you here. Man ASCII. Let's do this better. So if you go to the hex value 20, let's go 20. See, this is a space. And now the problem here in our application, in our application, this application cannot accept a space. Why? Because it will, as we saw, it will, it will break. It will the anything behind uh, after the break will not be used so we can't really use the break here so what we need to do is we need to fix our shell code how are we going to do that we will be using uh, msf venom okay so we'll use msf venom to encode 
our uh, shell code okay so that's really what we are going to use do here so what we can do is cat and then the name of our uh, shell code that we generated okay now we are going to call msf venom this is how i am doing this we can say the payload we, we are going to specify the payload and we are going to add the dash just like this so what that means is the payload is going to come from standard input so whatever this is going to throw through the pipe that's going to be considered the payload okay so this is what we are going to do is we are going to pass this one through to ms venom so this will be considered the the payload like when we type sometimes uh, windows and then uh, reverse uh, tcp shell etc okay this is exactly the same but uh, this is the same i mean but this time we are taking the shell the payload from uh, standard input okay and then we want to specify the architecture so i'm going to specify uh, x86 the platform i i i prefer to do this which is a windows the uh, executable or the encoder i mean sorry uh, x86 the she kataganai Kataganai minus f the c we want the output the format into c and we want to make sure what we exclude our personal byte that's one and then second our uh, space which we also want to exclude from this shell so if we now hit enter we'll get a payload or a shell code for win32 calculator okay but this time it will not include what it will not include the byte 20 so if you look closely here if you look closely here uh, you will see that we do not have the byte uh, 20. Yeah, if you look at these, you'll see that we don't have the byte 20. Let's do another thing just to show you how this is really useful, uh, especially uh, when we need to get rid of some bad, bad characters. We will get to discuss what bad characters is. But for now, uh, just know that this is how we can overcome all of this. So let's take another one and exclude that just for the sake of demonstration. I want to add one more. Let's say you want to exclude. Let's see, what do we have here? Uh, so let's see, do we have a 0B here anywhere? 0, 9, 0, 3. Uh, E C zero five one C. Huh. Yeah, let's just what we can do is D F. What is D F? Yeah, or, or let's see uh, A A maybe B E or I don't know. We can just exclude any one of these. I just want to show uh, the idea behind this. Like let's say let's say you want to exclude twenty two. Just an example. All you need to do now is because you might have a case where let's as I, as I said just a, just for demonstration purposes you want to exclude the byte 22 so now you can uh, run it uh, this way add like 22 and maybe 20 is not a bad character for another application but it's it's maybe a bad character here you can see the bytes the size of the shellcode did not change the payload is still 99 bytes forget about this this is by the way for all of the these these characters here and we can see here if you look at this you will not find the value 22 inside of this and now all you need to do is just copy this if we copy this to our uh, workstation here come on and if we do let's say shell code 2 equals i think i oh i can copy from one to another yeah you, you'll just need to do that for now probably i ha don't have that set up so if you just copy it from one system to the other now you'll have you'll you'll be able to run your shell code uh, perfectly with with no problem okay uh, i'll leave that for you to do this the whole idea here is how did i get this shell code and now as you saw by the way this is exactly the same shell code i have uh uh, I'm using from uh, this one, 
So if I go back here, this win exec shell code, this is exactly the same one I'm using. Okay, so this is how you build it. You feel free to read more about these uh, stack alignment and other features available that you can do. And yeah, that's, that's it for uh, this video. Uh, I hope now you can use this technique to get rid of, let's say, uh, a shell code that you need, but it has some, let's say, bad characters. We will discuss more bad characters, but at least I got the question about how did I get this shell code? And even, even though uh, here on the website it says it's running on all of these systems, it doesn't mention Windows 10. Uh, I, I think they, the the uh, the author behind this, Peter, has not probably just not updated or not tested this. But yeah, we 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 it definitely works on Windows 10. Okay, so that's it for uh, this video. Hope you now have an idea how to get rid of those bad characters, at least this way. And see you in another video. Thank you. Bye-bye.